In this video, I'm gonna beat Pokemon Yellow with only a Grimer, no items in battle. Now let's address the nickname that I give to my Grimer. Back in 2021, I put out a Grimer video and it had a lot of really cringy humor in it, so much so that a lot of you commented saying you couldn't even make it through the entire video. By the way, this video was the most disliked video of all time on my channel, and so today I am hoping that this video will earn me some redemption. Before we get into Grimer's stats, I want to show you my tier list and just mention that first stage poison types have not been doing well, so I'm not expecting great things out of Grimer in this run. However, it does have some things going for it. For base stats, Grimer has 80 HP and attack, 50 defense, 40 special, and 25 speed, giving it a 4.69% chance to crit, which is not very nice. However, I do have to say for a first stage Pokemon, 80 base attack is really good. And its move pool kind of supports this. It starts with a physical move in the form of Pound, and then it is going to get the best poison type stab move in the entire game, which is Sludge. It has a base power of 65, but a 40% chance of poisoning the target. I think that for the majority of the playthrough, this is going to be my go-to move. Grimer also gets access to two great badge boosting moves, Harden as well as Acid Armor. Harden is great to trigger the badge boost six times, whereas Acid Armor is better if you want to set up your defenses really quickly. Now I find Grimer's TM and HM learn set sort of strange. It gets Mega Drain, Thunderbolt, Thunder, and Fire Blast. The reason why it gets access to these strong elemental moves is sort of beyond me. With Coughing and Wheezing, I can see why they would have access to Fire Blast, like they're based on kind of toxic fumes and you can light those on fire, but for Grimer, it's Sludge. I guess Sludge is kind of like oil so you could burn it, but Thunderbolt, that one doesn't really make sense, and Mega Drain also doesn't make that much sense. Also, Grimer's special stat is half of its attack stat, so I don't think that these moves are going to get that much play in this run. The first major challenge that Grimer is going to have to face in this playthrough is of course Brock. It starts with only Pound and Disable, which is not a particularly good set against a Rock-type gym leader. In the first Pokemon games, Pokemon Red and Blue, Grimer was meant to be obtained in Pokemon Mansion at either level 30 or 32. As a result, it does not learn any new moves until level 30, so I'm stuck with only Pound for the early game. As a result, for Brock it is just going to be a numbers game, I need the level that is going to give me good damage against both the Geodude and the Onyx and enough health and defense to survive all of their attacks. When I'm preparing for Brock, another key metric that I usually track is my Pokemon's speed. If I could get to 24 speed, then I could move first against Onix, but by the time Grimer is level 15, I realize that there is no way for me to get this amount of speed, and I think at this level, I am ready to give Brock my first try. Brock's first Pokemon is Geodude, and in Pokemon Yellow it is two levels lower than it is in Red and Blue. This has an effect of giving it only the move Tackle instead of Tackle and Defense Curl. That means it's going to attack every turn, but it also means it is slightly weaker, so I'm going to be able to knock it out in seven hits. That lets Grimer move on to Onix with just over half health. However, I'm doing very little damage to Onix, and it knocks Grimer out, and it's still in the green, so I definitely need to train up more. I'm going to make a big cut here from the end of the first battle all the way to the beginning of the second battle, and you'll see that roughly 7 minutes of time passed. That's because Grimer is the medium fast growth rate, so grinding in Viridian Forest takes a long time. Despite the name of this growth rate, it is actually the second slowest growth rate in the early game. Now at level 18, a lot has changed in this battle. Geodude is only dealing 3 damage instead of 5 damage per tackle, and Pound is able to get a 6 hit. As a result, Grimer moves on to Onix with green health remaining. Now unfortunately, Grimer still does not outspeed, it has one less speed than Onyx. That's kind of frustrating. That does mean that Brock could chain Bind over and over and eventually knock me out, however his AI isn't good enough to know that he should do that, so in the end Grimer pulls through and gets a Brock split of 20 minutes and 12 seconds. Okay, so a first stage poison type. Off to another slow start, I see. I guess things could speed up from here, but I'm teaching Grimer Bide, so <laughs> that is not a good sign. I do this just so if I get hit by Sand Attack in the next section of the game, I have a move that can bypass accuracy checks. Sometimes it comes in really clutch against Rival 2 or against the Pidgeys on Nugget Bridge. Now one advantage to having to level so much for Brock is that I don't have to do that much training in the next section of the game. With some Pokemon where you can defeat Brock at a really low level, for example Paul Wag, then you have to do a lot of training in the next section of the game to be prepared for a fight like Misty or Rival 2. 
So as a result of this, I stay on minimum battles and minimum Pokemon for Route 3. However, once I reach Mount Moon, I think it is advisable to do some additional training. After all, I think Grimer is going to need an extremely high level to defeat the champion. Remember, his first two Pokemon are Sandslash and Alakazam. The Sandslash knows Earthquake and the Alakazam knows Psychic, both of which are super effective against Grimer. As a first stage Pokemon, I'm going to need a decently high level, probably around level 70 or 75, in order to be able to defeat him. Now, I've done a lot of these challenges over the past three years, and this experience has given me the knowledge to know how to save time during playthroughs like this. The way to do it is just fight a lot of optional trainers as you progress through areas for the first time. Having to backtrack wastes both real time and game time, so I really want to prevent that. From here on in, I'm not going to mention when I fight optional trainers, just assume that on most routes I'm going to be fighting a few extra people, if not everyone on the route. Okay, so with that, Grimer has cleared Mount Moon, and now I am in Cerulean City. Here, I think it obviously makes sense to fight Rival 2 as my next major battle. Misty is just going to be too powerful with my low special stat. Now there are a lot of ways that this fight could go really badly for Grimer. Spiro could use Growl, lowering my attack stat, meaning that Pound will do even less. But fortunately for me, I start things off with some great luck because Grimer crits the Spiro, knocking it out in a single turn. So no Growl to worry about this time. However, Santru is next, and I call this thing the Sand Attacking Devil for a reason. It goes for Sand Attack turn 1, lowering my accuracy. This means Pound has a 66% chance to hit now for the rest of the battle. However, Sand Attack misses on the second turn, so I am able to knock out the Santru. Oh, actually, with another critical hit, I can't believe that two in one battle with less than a 5% chance to score them. Now Rattata and Eevee are next, and here Grimer's slightly higher defense stat comes in really clutch because I'm not taking much damage. I knock the Rattata out in two hits, Eevee is all that's left, and it only takes two hits for Grimer to finish off. Okay, so no problems with Rival 2, that is encouraging. Now instead of fighting Misty next, I'm going to head to Vermilion City and the SSN. This is specifically because Grimer can learn Body Slam. And I'm going to talk about that in one moment. However, first I want to talk about this Rocket's Drowsy, because it is the first Pokemon in the entire game that has super effective damage against Grimer. I go for Pound, and it gets a critical hit, but it doesn't knock the Drowsy out. In retaliation, it uses Hypnosis and puts Grimer to sleep. The Rocket Trainer class only has one AI modification, which is just the status AI modification. If I have a status condition, then the opponent will not use a status inducing move. So in this case, the Drowsy is randomizing between Pound, Disable, and Confusion. Luckily for me, it chooses Disable, which misses, and then chooses Disable again, missing again. Then it goes for Pound. All right, this is going well. It chooses Disable after that, disabling Bide. I guess that is another advantage of having this move on my set. The Drowsy can disable it instead of Pound. And so Grimer ends up waking up without the Drowsy using Confusion once. I get a final Pound in and finish the rocket off. Okay, so up next I have to face Sandy. She is a really annoying trainer that has three sand attacking Pidgeys. I don't have any problems here today. So now let's get back to what I was talking about before, which is the fact that Grimer can learn Body Slam. I just want all of you to look at Grimer. This thing doesn't really have a body, it's just slime. I feel like it's a strange choice from the developers to give Pokemon like Grimer Body Slam, whereas Coughing doesn't get it. So once I reach the SSN, my first stop is to grab Body Slam. After that, I make sure to pick up Rest. I am sure that I'm going to need this against the champion. And then I get to use my new move against the rival. And yeah, it just completely destroys him. So now let's backtrack to Cerulean City and take on Misty. She has good AI, which means she's going to choose moves that are super effective. Luckily for me, her Starmie does not know any psychic type moves. I often think about what would happen if the Starmie knew a move like Confusion or Psybeam. That would make the game so much harder for poison types, so I'm really lucky that that is not the case. I really think the only way that I could lose here is if Starmie gets a critical hit with Bubble Beam, but in this battle it doesn't, and it actually used Bubble Beam twice, which does just under half to Grimer, so I'm able to take a convincing victory over her. So up next is Surge. I'm sure he would need a critical hit from Thunderbolt to knock me out from full health, but the Raichu just goes for Mega Punch first turn, doing about a quarter, and then I get Paralysis followed by two Body Slams, finishing it off. Alright, Surge was just as bad as he is usually. You know a Gym Leader is really bad when first stage Poison types do not struggle against them. 
Actually, Zubat really struggled against him, so maybe that's not entirely true. Now, there are two prizes from obtaining his badge. The first one is to get a 12.5% boost to my defense stat. I normally do not mention this. However, I think for Grimer, that's actually quite useful, especially because it's going to be setting up moves like Harden and Acid Armor. Having higher defense with this thing is really nice. The other advantage is that I get the TM for Thunderbolt, which I am going to teach to Grimer right away. By the way, I'm going to put it in the place of Disable. I didn't mention it up until this point, but Disable is so bad bad in Generation 1. It does not disable the last used move, and you also do not get to pick the move it disables. It just randomly disables one of the enemy's moves. And in addition to this effect, it only has 55% accuracy. Now I should mention the fact that I taught Thunderbolt this early, because in a lot of playthroughs I say that I want to hold off on teaching it until later in the game, but before that, let's face the wrapping lass. Unfortunately for me, I went into this battle without healing. Hopefully Body Slam is going to one-hit the Oddish though, and in this case it does, so in this fight she has no chance of using her most potent combo. Let's get back to talking about Thunderbolt. With most Pokemon, it's not very useful in the mid-game. There's lots of fighting, poison, grass, ground, and psychic types, so Thunderbolt isn't dealing a lot of damage against any of those. Also, the final gym leader is Giovanni, who is a ground-type specialist, so Thunderbolt is completely useless there. And immediately following him is the rival, who has a Sand Slash as his lead, but then following him is Lorelei, and this is where you really want Thunderbolt. So in a lot of cases, I find that Thunderbolt is useful taught after Giovanni. However, for Grimer, I think that it's useful that I teach it now, just because it is going to speed up the battles against the Slowpoke in Rock Tunnel. Remember, they do know Confusion, so having super effective damage against them is very important. Additionally, there's another reason that teaching Thunderbolt now is safe, and that's the fact that Grimer's move pool is so limited. Teaching Thunderbolt early on is more dangerous with a Pokemon that has overchoice, like Gyarados, whereas in this case, like my final moveset is probably going to be pretty straightforward with Grimer. Now that I've made it past both of the Pokemaniacs and their Slowpokes, I have to face the self-destructing Hiker. For this fight, I have two available strategies. The first one is simply to use Bide. This can accumulate damage from either Tackle, Rock Throw, or Self-Destruct, and then pay it back to the Rock-type Pokemon, bypassing type effectiveness. By doing this, I take the first Geodude down to orange health and finish it off with Body Slam. Okay, this is a good start to the fight. I go for Bide again, and this one just barely catches the second Geodude's self-destruct, pays back the damage to the Graveler, and gives me an easy victory. As I head into Celadon City and explore the Rocket Hideout, I will just mention that the other strategy there was to teach Grimer Rest in the place of a move like Pound or Bide, then I could just heal every time I take a self-destruct and tank all the hits, winning the battle. However, most Pokemon really only benefit from Rest against the Champion, so I Want to hold off on using this TM as long as is possible. After clearing the rocket hideout, I have a lot of money so I can buy 5 vitamins. Now I kind of think I made a mistake here because I go for protein to boost Grimer's attack stat. However, in retrospect I really think that the best choice here would have been Carbos to boost my speed. Pokemon with mid to low speed stats, especially Pokemon that are weak to psychic type moves, usually really struggle in the mid game of Pokemon Yellow. This is just because there is such a big level jump for all the gym leaders, and Koga for example has a bunch of psychic type moves. Moves. Anyways, we'll have to see if this choice comes back to get me a little bit later in the playthrough. For now, I go up against the rival in Pokemon Tower. By the way, here I have a chance to learn Minimize, and I should mention that I updated my rules at the beginning of 2023 so that now evasion moves are not allowed in playthroughs at all until level 100. The reason I came to this conclusion is I actually tried to film a Grimer video at the end of last year, and I used Minimize during that playthrough. However, it wasn't interesting at all, because I basically stopped training as soon as I got Minimize, beat every major trainer in the game on minimum battles from that point, and yeah, it was very straightforward. What I realized is that every single Pokemon that can learn an evasion boosting move by level up can just use the exact same strategy, and that would make the playthroughs of Pokemon like Staryu much less interesting. In the future, I do intend to explore explore the evasion mechanic because I do think that it's part of Pokemon, however for the main solo challenges I am not going to be using it. Okay, so let's move on. I defeat the rival, and next I have to take on the trainer that I call Agatha Jr. She has two Ghastly, and she is absolutely awful. First turn, she confuses Grimer, it hits itself twice, Nightshade lands, doing a lot of damage, and then when I finally hit with Thunderbolt, it does less than half. I guess luckily I paralyze the Ghastly, I get another Thunderbolt in, taking it down to a sliver. However, I am not through the woods yet because even though I defeat it, she still has one more, and in this case, it's able to paralyze me, confuse me, and while I do get the second Ghastly down to a sliver, Grimer hits itself, and that's it. 
Having a reset here is always a risk for Pokemon that cannot one-shot these Ghastly and outspeed. Normal types have a bit of an advantage because they can't be paralyzed, so there's no combo status condition that can be used against them, but for all other types of Pokemon, this fight can be brutal. However, it is largely luck-based, so I'm able to defeat her on my next attempt. Alright, so now let's skip ahead through a bunch of stuff. I defeat Jesse and James, pick up some more vitamins because Grimer is pretty bad. After that, I fight a bunch of trainers on Cycling Road to level up more. I proceed through the Safari Zone. Here you'll notice that I have learned the move Sludge by this point, so then I can face all the trainers in Erica's gym for some fast experience. Okay, now it's time to take on the fourth gym leader. For this battle I need to talk about two things. The first thing is good AI. It knows that poison and grass type moves are not very effective against Grimer's type, so Erica is going to randomize between all of her moves. This does mean there is one threat to Grimer, which is the fact that it can be put to sleep by sleep powder and then whittled away at by moves like acid and razor leaf. The second thing I need to talk about is the badge boost glitch because Grimer is going to learn harden now in the place of pound. Just to simplify things so I don't have to describe this entire glitch, Basically, whenever I boost Grimer's stats with either Harden or Acid Armor, it is also going to boost the other stats that currently have a badge boost. So in this case, when I use Harden, it's going to boost my attack stat. Once I have the Volcano Badge and the Soul Badge, then Grimer will get boosts to its attack, special, and speed. I continue my training in the Fighting Dojo, and then Sylph. Throughout this portion of the game, I am essentially fighting every single trainer. Also, Grimer's moveset is great for training because I have three damage dealing moves, Sludge, Thunderbolt, and Body Slam. This means I have to backtrack to the Pokemon Center to heal way less. After all this training, Grimer is level 48 against the rival. I wanted to try this fight because I figured that I could tank one hit from the Kadabra and maybe knock everything out fairly quickly, but the Sand Slash is a three hit, I get my accuracy lowered, and then because of that I have some accuracy problems against Cloyster, I am also not one hitting with Thunderbolt, so things are not going well by the time I make it to the Magneton. It hits me with three moves and Grimer goes down. There are only two choices available to me now, use rare candies or face Koga, because I can't surf without his badge. So I guess I should try him now. At level 48, after using five proteins in the department store, Sludge doesn't one-hit the first level 44 Venonat. That is a bad sign. By the way, here, you'll notice that every time I hit one of the Venonats, it says it is super effective. You're probably going to think, that's really weird. Venonats are bug poison types. Well, in Generation 1, the poison type is super effective against the bug type. However, the poison type does resist the poison type, so my moves are dealing neutral damage. The fact that it's displaying the super effective message is just a glitch. I do manage to make it to his Venomoth, but I have such low health it uses leech life, which in this case is super effective, bug moves are super effective against poison types, and it finishes Grimer off. So at this point in the game, with all the trainers that I have defeated, it is time to beat everyone on Route 15. Whenever I do this training, I know the Pokemon I'm using is not going to rank highly. Beating everyone here brings Grimer up to level 53, over two damage rounding thresholds, so now I should have better damage against Koga. However, there is something else I can do to make this fight a little bit easier. On the first turn of the battle, I can use Harden, which badge boosts my attack, and then I can use Sludge to knock out the first Venonat in one hit. Okay, but will I get the next two? The answer is no, the second one survives, however Koga just uses an X attack so I get it for free anyways. But the third one is going to survive as well because it's a higher level, it hits Psychic, and takes me down to 60 hit points. Okay, well, this is not good. Luckily for me, Koga uses an X attack on the first turn the Venomoth is in battle, and that lets me take it to orange health. Next, it goes for Leech Life. Now this is a physical move, and I boosted my defense stat, so it doesn't do very much despite being super effective. I get a second sludge in, and that knocks the Venomoth out. Okay, I have to say the speed boost from 69 to 77 from Koga's badge is not very good. <laughs> I was hoping it'd be a little bit faster than that, but what can you do with 25 base speed? After exploring Cinnabar Mansion and using a few more vitamins, I head back to Sylph to face the rival again. This fight is significantly easier now. I can two hit the Sand Slash with Body Slam, one hit the Cloister with Thunderbolt, and from there things get very straightforward, except for the Kadabra, because it still does outspeed. However, I am so overleveled that Psybeam, its best move, does almost nothing. I finish it off, move on to the Flareon, and knock it out with two hits from Sludge. We're going to cut ahead here to the Giovanni fight. The reason is that here I get the chance to learn Acid Armor. Now Sludge, Thunderbolt, and Body Slam are all useful moves that I don't want to discard, so I had to choose if I wanted to teach this in the place of Harden. And while it is great to set up my defense stack faster, in the end I decided not to learn it. It would have been great against the champion's Sand Slash because then I can set up my defense very quickly, however I will get less badge boosts, and what I was worried about is not outspeeding the Alakazam. I am thinking I'm going to need at least 4 or 5 Hardens in order to do 
that. Hopefully this choice will not come back to bite me later on. The next major battle is Blaine. I think the best strategy here for Grimer is to set up with Harden until I outspeed all of Blaine's Pokemon, and then I can use Sludge to knock his Pokemon out quickly. However, I just barely do not have enough damage for the Ninetales to be a one-hit. Luckily, the Rapidash is, but the Arcanine of course will not be. It is his most defensive Pokemon overall. It strikes back with Fire Blast and finishes Grimer off. However, in the next battle, I get two Sludges in because the Arcanine uses Takedown, which does almost nothing, and I take it out. With Blaine defeated and a special boost on my side, now it is time to face Sabrina, who is theoretically the best gym leader against Grimer. Now there are multiple reasons why she could be so bad. Number one, the Abra outspeeds Grimer and can just use Flash right away, luckily it misses. I knock the Abra out in a single hit from Sludge. By the way, Psychic types do not resist poison type moves. This took me so long to learn when I first started making videos on the channel. Next she sends in Kadabra, it hits Psychic, and Grimer goes down to orange health. Now I basically need to luck through the Alakazam, it can use Recover on full health. Sludge takes it to red health, but it hits with Psychic on the next turn. In yellow version, Sabrina does not have good AI, so essentially this fight is just rolling the dice. I have to wait till she uses moves like Recover, Kinesis, Psywave, or Reflect enough to give me the win. And in this playthrough, it happens in the third battle against her. Now before I move on to Giovanni, who is one of the most terrifying gym leaders in Pokemon Yellow, I just want to mention that I think Sabrina is one of the most overhyped gym leaders in Generation 1. Everyone always says how good she is because she has an Alakazam, but really in both of the games, she's not very powerful. Now with some Sabrina slander, out of the way, let's head to Viridian Gym. At this point in playthroughs, normal type moves stop becoming very useful, so I'm going to teach Mega Drain in the place of Body Slam. Without teaching this move now, the first cool trainer in the gym would be absolutely awful to defeat. I would have to knock the Rhyhorn out with either Sludge or Body Slam, but with Mega Drain, it is very easy. I defeat the remaining trainers in the gym. This takes Grimer almost up to level 60, so I backtrack to the Fuchsia City Beach to fight two more trainers. This gives Grimer enough experience to level up to level 60, and now I am ready to face Giovanni. I expect that this battle will be one of the hardest battles in the entire playthrough. First is Doug Trio. It's very fast, it knows Fissure, Earthquake, Dig, and Sand Attack. An amazing set against a mono poison type. My only solution against it really is to set up Harden so that I'm going to outspeed it, and it is also going to minimize the damage that the rest of Giovanni's Pokemon deal to me with their ground type moves. I managed to safely get to plus 4 where I outspeed all of Giovanni's Pokemon, and then I can use Mega Drain to knock the Doug Trio out, gaining back some of my health. By the way, my first attack didn't knock it out in one hit, so I figured I should set up one more time, and then I take it down. Next is Persian, I knock it out with a single sludge, and then Giovanni sends in Nidoqueen. Now this is where things get really challenging. I figured Mega Drain was my best move because it has the highest effective power, but after using it once, I figured I should use Sludge instead to see what the damage range is like. After all, Grimer's attack stat is far higher than its special stat, so Sludge is doing about the same amount of damage. I finish off the Nidoqueen, surviving with orange health, and now I'm kind of regretting not using Mega Drain against it because I don't have much left over. I'm going to switch back to the recovery move for the Nido King. Luckily, Giovanni uses a guard spec on the first turn. However, after that, the Nido King starts using Earthquake, but it just barely does not finish Grimer off. I am moving on to the Rhydon with 13 hit points left. Okay, Grimer does not have good special, but I am really hoping that this move that does four times damage is going to knock his ace out in one hit. And it does. I did not expect to beat Giovanni in the first fight with Grimer. Okay, Rival 6 is next. Here things get much more straightforward. I just knocked the Sand Slash out, knocked the Execute out pretty quickly, and then I set up Harden against the Cloister. From here there isn't really anything I have to worry about. So at this point I just want to mention the fact that I have saved all of my rare candies to this point in the playthrough. After I complete Victory Road I have a total of 11, but then I do something that I rarely do, which is backtrack to the power plant to pick up a 12th rare candy. This means that essentially I can be level 74 at any point that I want, however I want to see how many league members I can get through without using my rare candies. This is going to give me better data for my second playthrough, and it also has the ability to give me a slightly higher level for the champion. So now at level 62, let's head into the league. In most playthroughs, Lorelei is one of the hardest league members. Now for Grimer, I don't think that that's going to be the case for a couple of reasons. She leads with Dugong, and it has Rest, so her good AI is going to prioritize this move. Now the Dugong does have special AI, so 2 out of 5 turns it will consider all of its moves neutrally effective, so it is able to attack. 
However, more often than not, it's going to be using rest when it really shouldn't be, and that's going to give me the time I need to set up Harden. You can see this setup badge boosting my attack, special, and speed in the bottom left. Also, while I'm setting up, I do damage to the dugong just so that it actually does go to sleep whenever it uses rest. And then once I make it to plus 6 defense, I am ready for my sweep. I knock the dugong out against the cloister, Thunderbolt gets a 1 hit, she sends in Slowbro. Now this thing does have Psychic, however it isn't able to survive Grimer's attack. Now her fastest Pokemon is Jinx, but with the badge boosts I am much faster and Sludge gets the 1 hit. All that's left is Lapras, I go for Thunderbolt, it does a lot, however the Lapras does survive. It strikes back with Hydro Pump, getting a critical hit, however Grimer survives. That gives it one more turn to take down her ace. Okay, so it's time to fight the hiker. We're gonna listen to some silly music right now while I completely smash him. In this case, since his team is so bad, I figured that I did not need full setup. However, that means that Grimer just barely doesn't knock out the Hitmonchan. I got really scared that it was gonna freeze me with Ice Punch, but luckily it just goes for Thunder Punch doing almost nothing and I finish it off on the next turn. From there, things are quite straightforward. One hit the Hitmonlee, one hit the Onyx, and then against Machamp, I'm gonna knock it out over two turns. I choose Thunderbolt on the first turn just in case it paralyzes. It doesn't, Grimer survives Karate Chop even though it got a critical hit, and I finish him off on the next turn. Agatha of course is next, and this fight presents a serious problem for Grimer. I don't have any moves that are particularly good against her ghost poison types. I figured setting up on the first Gengar was the safest bet. Its best move against Grimer is Confuse Ray. However, then Lick paralyzes me, and this is going to make the fight much more difficult. This has to be one of the best status conditions. Like I know Freeze is basically an instant loss in Generation 1, but Paralysis basically goads you into thinking that you have a chance, and then you waste a whole bunch of time trying to fight the trainer and eventually succumb to their strategies, which is what happens here. So for the next fight I decided to teach Mimic in the place of Thunderbolt, and then when I go for it, she switches to the Golbat, which triggers a glitch, meaning that if I copy a move, it will be permanently on Grimer's moveset. This is just unacceptable, so that's a reset. So let's go into the next fight and I'll show you what I'm going to do with Mimic. I'm going to use it to steal Gengar's Lick, which is super effective against all of Agatha's Pokemon. This is great for Grimer because it's a physical attacker and ghost moves are physical in Generation 1. I knock it out and move on to the Golbat, which I surprisingly two-shot with Sludge. However, now I'm stuck attacking because the Haunter does have Hypnosis and Dream Eater, and I really do not want to get hit by that. I manage to take it out, but then the Arbok that follows uses Glare, paralyzing Grimer, and I don't have very much health left over for the final Gengar. And it is by far the biggest threat to Grimer, because all of its moves are good. Confuse Ray, Psychic, Hypnosis, and Dream Eater. Today it just chooses Psychic right away, which Grimer surprisingly survives. Lick does half, which is encouraging, but then the Gengar just uses Psychic again, and that's it. To this point in the playthrough, I have saved all of my rare candies, so I have a total of 12. I am going to use 11 of them now to take Grimer up from level 64 all the way to level 75. So now let's see if I can keep Thunderbolt on my set and defeat Agatha. By the way, I am saving Mega Drain very intentionally because I think I'm going to need it against the champion Sandslash. It is both reliable damage against it and it heals me, which is going to be very important because that thing knows Earthquake. Unfortunately, Grimer's Thunderbolts aren't doing very much against the first Gengar, but it can't really do anything to me other than cause paralysis, which it doesn't in this fight. She switches into Golbat, I hit it with Thunderbolt and knock it out in a single hit, then she sends Gengar back in and I finish it off. Okay, so Thunderbolt takes Haunter to the red, which then causes Agatha to use a super potion, giving me the free KO. Next is Arbok, which I easily one hit with Thunderbolt, and I've made it to the final Gengar with green health. Thunderbolt does more than half, Gengar uses Psychic, gets a critical hit, and knocks Grimer out. In the next fight I tried setting up, but that caused Grimer to get paralyzed. I do make it to the final Gengar, but once again it finishes me off with a critical hit from Psychic. However, in the next fight the Gengar just chooses Dream Eater, allowing me to two-shot with Thunderbolt. And I am very glad that I was able to keep this move on my set, because against Lance, I can immediately use it to one-shot the Gyarados. Okay, from here I am really hoping that I am going to one-shot the two Dragonairs with Sludge, just because the first one can paralyze you with Thunder Wave, and the second one can freeze you with Ice Beam. I get a one-shot on the first one, however the second one does survive, it only uses Bubble Beam though, and then faints to poison damage. Now I just want to note as Aerodactyl is coming out, my Grimer has 111 speed, which is nowhere near what I need to move first against the Aerodactyl, 
Aerodactyl. However, it is also not what I need to move first against the Dragonite, which will follow. Aerodactyl goes for Hyper Beam, and that could be a problem if I'm not able to one-shot the Aerodactyl and it's able to deal two turns of damage to me. I level up to 76, which gives Grimer 112 speed, so it is still slower than the Dragonite. Lance's Ace goes for Hyper Beam, Grimer survives, hits Sludge, which does more than half, Dragonite has to recharge, and I finish it off. Alright, so after a bit of a bumpy ride against Agatha, we had smooth sailing against Lance, and now it is time to take on the champion. Okay, please tell me the Sand Slash is not going to cause any problems. Grimer's faster, so it's always going to get a Harden off before the Sand Slash uses Earthquake, and it is always going to choose this move because the champion has good AI. Earthquake does about a third, which is really encouraging, but I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to outspeed the Alakazam that is coming up next, because it has 156 speed. Now, I didn't plan this, but after two more Hardens at plus three, my Grimer has 158 speed, which is two more than the Alakazam. Because of the Sand Slash's damage ranges, I am always going to be able to get this set up, unless it critical hits. So now that I'm faster than the Alakazam, it is time to knock the Sand Slash out with two uses of Mega Drain and move on to the Alakazam. In this case, I really want to get the one hit because I don't want it to roll for Psychic or Psy Beam. And Sludge is able to do it. Executor's next. It's going to prioritize Hypnosis against Grimer because it thinks Psychic moves are super effective. However, Sludge is super effective as well, and I take it down in a single hit. But that's probably not going to be the case for the following Magneton because this thing is so tanky, and as predicted, it survives with a sliver. It strikes back with Thunderbolt, which surprisingly does not knock Grimer out, so I take it down on the next turn. Now I think here I make a significant misplay, which is to use Mega Drain against the Cloister. I should have remembered that Flareon has Reflect, and it's just going to spam this Psychic-type move against my Poison-type. As a result, I am not able to knock the Cloister out, it goes for Ice Beam, Grimer survives, doesn't get frozen, and I finish the Cloister her off. All that's left is Flareon, and it is never going to do damage to Grimer, plus Sludge is able to get the one hit. So Grimer clocks in with a time of 1 hour 41 minutes and 40 seconds, with 12 resets at level 77. This took 6 hours and 7 minutes of game time. So I'm going to quickly recap all of the places where Grimer had resets. It had one against Brock, the Chandler in Pokemon Tower, Rival 5, Koga, Blaine, and then two against Sabrina, and five against Agatha. I do think that I lucked past Giovanni, I probably should have had one or two resets there, so I'll need a better strategy for my second playthrough. So let's get into it, and of course I am going to face Brock at level 18 again. This is just the most consistent level to defeat him at. Now while I finish off his Pokemon, I want to talk about the general strategy for this second playthrough. What I realized with my first run is that I only need three turns of setup to get an outspeed on the Alakazam against the Champion. Now I can make things even easier on Grimer and more consistent if I switch from Harden to Acid Armor. However, with this strategy in mind, I am going to be playing around two main constraints. Number one, I need to be a very high level level to face the champion in order to get the three turns set up outspeed on the Alakazam. And this is a requirement of the Acid Armor strategy, because not outspeeding the Alakazam just feels way too inconsistent. And I do really prioritize consistency in most of my runs, and this strategy has the chance to make Grimer's second playthrough extremely consistent. The first choice that I make that helps with consistency is using Rest against the Self-Destructing Hiker. In Celadon City, I buy 4 Carbos and 1 Protein. It is very important to not buy 5 Carbos, because then I won't be able to use one of the Carbos that I just naturally encounter in the overworld. From there, Rest is helpful against the Chandler in Pokemon Tower, because if things are going really badly here, I can always heal. And in this case, it actually prevents one reset, so I make it past the Chandler without any. And now I really need to talk about training in the mid game. There were significant resets against a lot of the trainers here, and I need a very high level for the champion. Because after you clear Pokemon Tower, you have access to the majority of the remaining map in Kanto, I am going to fight almost every trainer, leveling Grimer up as much as is possible. Front load training like this really improves consistency, and despite seeming like it's going to cause more game time to accumulate, in the end this is actually going to save me game time. The reason is, is that you get some efficiencies by not having to backtrack to areas later after figuring out that you can't defeat a key trainer. In this case, I end my training in Sylph at level 56. By the way, during all of that I did fight Erica, but obviously that fight is not noteworthy. At this point, I'm going to use some rare candies, four to be exact, to take Grimer up to level 60 before I face 
against the rival. For this fight, I replace Rest with Mega Drain just so I have a two hit against the Sand Slash. I wanted it to only have one turn to attack, so it's less likely that it uses Sand Attack. And from there, this fight gets much easier because the remaining Pokemon on the rival's team are all one hits. By the way, that wasn't the case if I went into this battle at level 56. Then the Ninetales and the Jolteon both have chances to survive Grimer's hits. I should note here that the Jolteon could be annoying for Grimer, Thundershock can paralyze, Sand Attack is Sand Attack, and Pin Missile is super effective. Plus, Jolteon has a very high critical hit rate. Now, Kadabra does outspeed Grimer, but Confusion and Psybeam both won't do very much just because I'm so overleveled. I make it to the Jolteon, it goes for Pin Missile, missing, and Sludge gets the knockout. All of this overleveling also helps me against Koga. I have guaranteed one hits on his first two Venonats and an 85% chance to knock out the third Venonat. Today, I get the favorable roll, move on to the Venomoth. Now, its most powerful move against me is Psychic, and it only has a 32% chance to knock out Grimer with two uses of Psychic. So I finish off the Psychic ground type still with no resets. Blaine is a bit of a tricky situation. I wanted enough speed to move first against all of his Pokemon, so I'll need at least 119, and to get this, I'm gonna have to use Acid Armor at least twice. Luckily for me, the Ninetales goes for Tail Whip, which badge boosts me again, before I get my final Acid Armor in, and now I have guaranteed one hits on all of his Pokemon except the Arcanine. Grimer does more than half, tanks a Fire Blast easily, and finishes Blaine off. Things were a little bit less consistent there, and now things get much more inconsistent against Sabrina. Before the battle, I'm going to use three rare candies to take Grimer up to level 67. This gives it exactly 103 speed, which means I am tied with the Abra. Yes, I am tied with the Abra at level 67. However, I think this gives me the consistency boost that I need, because now one of two turns I will move first. Also, the Abra only knows Flash, and this move has 60% accuracy, so it's basically just a little bit better than a coin toss. Also, I should mention the fact that Sabrina can use an X-Defend. Because the AI sometimes replaces the move choice with an item, the Abra is even less likely to hit with Flash. So overall, the Abra is not really an issue. The issue is the two Pokemon that follow, because both of them know Psychic. However, the Kadabra just goes for Psy Wave, doing chip damage, and I finish it off in a single hit, but the Alakazam does use Psychic. However, the overleveling allows me to survive it, hit a Sludge, and knock the powerful Psychic type out. I do realize that I got a critical hit there, so just so that you know, Sludge does have a guaranteed one hit unless Sabrina uses an X-Defend. In that case, I would have to two hit, but it doesn't really change the math of the battle because I'm still only going to get hit by one turn of Psychic. Okay, so it is time to face Giovanni now. I fought some trainers in Sabrina's gym before I used the rare candies there, and I also fought some trainers before Giovanni, just so I could get Grimer up to level 68, where I can use two more rare candies to get it to level 70 before this battle. This is critical to ensure the maximum consistency against him. I can now use Acid Armor, which is much better than Harden at setting up against the Doug Trio. I'm going to take way less damage from Earthquake and Dig. Once I get plus two, I'm above 133 speed, so the Doug Trio can't hit me with Fissure anymore. And the only move that is truly scary is now Sand Attack. I think it's really weird when a move that you obtain on the very first route of the game on a Pokemon like Pidgey is the scariest move on the lead Pokemon's team of the final gym leader. Okay, <laughs> Sand Attack is so good in Generation 1. Anyways, I don't get hit by it, and for this fight I put Mimic in the place of Mega Drain, allowing me to steal Earthquake. After that, I knock the Doug Trio as well as the Persian out with Sludge. Now I can use Earthquake for super effective damage against the Nidoqueen, Nidoking, and the Rhydon. And here, I should mention why I use those two rare candies to get to level 70 before this fight, because Earthquake does not have a guaranteed one hit with three uses of Acid Armor if I am under level 70. But with level 70, I easily knock out Giovanni's ace. The rival on Route 22 is not a problem. Full setup gives me an outspeed on the Jolteon, so I easily sweep through this. By the way, I did use two rare candies before this fight to get to level 72. That is going to perfectly line up my experience so that I get level 75 right before the champion. And remember, I want this to be as exact as is possible, just so I don't level up in the middle of the battle and lose my badge boosts. From there, I take an easy victory over Lorelei, the first member of the Elite Four. And then against the second member of the Elite Four, Agatha, I am going to do a different strategy. Because I know that I don't need Mega Drain for the champion, I've been able to use Mimic earlier on in the playthrough. And it is going to be very useful here. I can copy Substitute, and this prevents Agatha from both paralyzing and confusing Grimer. Well, uh, her Arbok can paralyze with Glare, but Gengar cannot paralyze with Lick. Unfortunately for me, the Arbok does paralyze me with Glare, but still Grimer is able to pull through on its first attempt. 
So I have made it to Lance with no resets. I think it might be possible for Grimer to do this without resetting a single time. After all, Lance is very easy. I set up two uses of Acid Armor here. This gives me guaranteed one hits on all of Lance's Pokemon. From there, I knock the Gyarados out with Thunderbolt, the first Dragonair with Sludge, and then I mimic Ice Beam. This allows me to one hit Lance's final three Pokemon, and right as the Dragonite goes down, Grimer levels up to level 75. Now I have one additional rare candy, and I'm gonna use this to get up to level 76 and reset the experience bar to the lowest possible value. This is so I don't level up during the champion fight. So, will Grimer be able to do this without any resets? And the answer is... Sandslash is awful. It immediately crits me with Earthquake. And it doesn't do this once, it does it twice, giving Grimer two really frustrating resets. However, it can't crit forever, so in the third battle, I'm able to get fully set up. Now I should mention here the fact that my Grimer sprite has disappeared. By the way, this is the animation that Acid Armor has. It is one of the weirdest animations in the game. I'm really not sure if this is like a glitch or if this is the intended functionality. Like, why would Grimer disappear after using Acid Armor? That just seems really weird. Anyways, I figured I'd mention it because people have pointed it out in the past, saying that my ROM is glitched or something like that. No, it's not glitched. This is just how it works. Okay, so because the fact I have Mimic this time, I can steal Earthquake from the Sandslash and then use it to knock it out. After that, I easily one-shot the Alakazam, as well as the Executor, and from there, things are very straightforward. Thunderbolt on the Cloister, Earthquake on the Ninetales, and then for the Jolteon, you might be worried that it's going to use Thunder. However, it sees that Pin Missile is super effective, and it's a physical move, so Grimer just shrugs it off and finishes the champion. It clocks in with a final time of 1 hour, 28 minutes, and 36 seconds, with two resets at level 76. This took 5 hours and 48 minutes of game time. Honestly, Grimer is not that bad for a first stage poison type. When we compare it with a Pokemon like Coughing, things are so different. Coughing doesn't have any badge boosting moves, and it also doesn't have body slam. Plus, I should mention, if you are not playing with my rules, Grimer is just far better because it knows minimize. Definitely of the three mono first stage poison types, Grimer is the best. It outperformed Zubat, Coughing, and Ekans. And with a time of 1 hour and 28 minutes, it actually squeezes itself into the E tier. Interestingly enough, it is actually 18 seconds faster than Rhyhorn, which I think is hilarious, because Rhyhorn seems like it would be a much better Pokemon. However, Rhyhorn has some truly awful synergy. It is a dual type and has two four times weakness, plus it has really bad speed. That is not a winning combination, and as a result, it is still the final Pokemon in the E tier, but Grimer earns itself the second last spot. Okay, I should address the fact that the E tier is getting gigantic. We are running out of space in this tier. Now, most tier lists don't even have an E tier or an F tier. It's usually just like S, A, B, C, D, that kind of thing. Keeps it simple. However, I knew since I was going to have to rank so many Pokemon that I needed to add extra tiers just to have physical space available on the graphic. I tried shuffling the thresholds around just a little bit to give myself more space, but I couldn't find a satisfactory way to balance all of the tiers that I have currently. However, if you look at this graphic for long enough, you are going to realize something. There is a lot of space vertically still available, so I can actually add a tier and split the E tier up into two separate tiers, which I think is the best thing to do, because currently the E tier has a very wide range of times. For example, Meowth is very close to 1 hour and 10 minutes, whereas Rhyhorn is very close to 1 hour and 30 minutes. Those are dramatically different finishes for these two Pokemon. However, I run into some naming convention problems here. I think it's kind of ugly to have like an E1 and an E2 tier when none of the other letters feature a convention that is like that. I also think that adding a G tier just makes no sense. It feels like the F tier should be the bottom tier before the Bruno tier. That leaves me one more choice, which is to add an S plus tier, move all the Pokemon that are currently in the S tier up to it, the Pokemon from the A tier up to the S tier, and so on. However, that solution makes me feel like Pokemon like Gyarados and Arcanine are going to be ranked a little bit too highly in the tier list when their results were not very good. Now I could just sidestep this problem and not add a new tier, but instead just add another line for the E tier. However, I don't think that that clearly visually communicates the wide ranges of times that are present within the E tier. Anyways, I'm not really sure what to do, so please let me know what you think is the best choice in the comments. Like, subscribe, and ring the chime echo so you're notified when I post new videos. If you support me on Patreon or through YouTube memberships, thank you so much, it means the world to me. Now, if you made it this far, you're incredible. I'll see you in my next video.
Did you think the video was done? Of course it isn't. We still have more to go. We have to see if Grimer can beat Professor Oak. For this battle, I always do it at the level the Pokemon defeated the League at, so Grimer is going in at level 76, and it is about to level up to level 77. This means if I set up on the Tauros, I will lose all of my badge boosts as soon as the Executor comes out. So I'm not going to do my setup here, I just knock Oak's lead out right away, and move on to the Psychic Grass type. Now setting up here has a risk because the Executor knows Hypnosis. I figured that it would be better here to use Sludge to knock it out right away with super effective damage. It takes two hits, and then against the Arcanine I can set up. My goal is to move faster than both the Blastoise and the Gyarados, which is easy because one badge boost gives me enough speed. However, I'm going to continue setting up to plus six so that I have as much damage as is possible with Thunderbolt against both Blastoise and Gyarados. They know Hydro Pump, and I really don't want to get hit by that. Unfortunately for me, the time it takes me to get set up also means the Arcanine has time to do chip damage, and Grimer only has orange health left over when I knock it out. Against the Blastoise, there is no way I'm going to one-hit with Thunderbolt. It survives on red health, but it only goes for Bite because it is randomizing its move selection against me because there is no type interaction between the Water and Poison type. That allows me to knock it out on the next turn and move on to Oak's Ace, which is a level 70 Gyarados. By the way, this is the highest level trainer Pokemon that is encoded into the Pokemon Yellow cartridge. However, in this case, Grimer has no problems because Thunderbolt does four times damage and Gyarados goes down to a single hit. So Grimer defeated Professor Oak on its first attempt. That was really not very difficult. All right, that's officially it. I'll see you in the next one.